Okay, what I'm going to do right now is uh, just show you what I'm going to show you. So you see this car going around the track. Uh, and it's got a little bit of lean if you look close. As it goes around the corners, let me give you a better shot of this. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so I've exaggerated, of course, but as it goes into this corner, the body leans heavily, and it straightens back out as it comes back out of the turn. And it leans the other way. So it's giving you a realistic kind of a chassis uh, suspension feel to the uh, vehicle. Um, now, I'm not showing every little bit of this because part of this tutorial is uh, written down on a, my website on an HTML tutorial, but there's things about keyframing that don't show well on an HTML document, so that's why I'm doing the video to go with it. So, uh, first thing I should say is that uh, this is what the hierarchy looks like. you got the chassis is the king, then you've got the car body, and the four wheels are children of that. And then I have a path that it follows. And that's all described pretty well in the uh, HTML tutorial that's on 3dcognition.com. However, the body lean is the tough thing, and the uh, animation of the wheels is a little tricky too. So let me just go to this body and take these keyframes out. In fact, you can see here um, this lean from frame 50 to 100, or let's say to like 150. Let's just get rid of those keyframes. Okay, so now there's no lean. It just goes around like a regular car. So right about 50, what I'm going to do is just nudge this a little bit. So I'm going to go frame 50. I'm going to select the body, and I'm going to turn on Auto Key, and I'm just going to use my Rotate tool. Now you can see that uh, I've got Angular Snap on Rotate turned on up here on the standard toolbar. So I'll go to mo Rotate, and I'm making sure also that my coordinate system is set to Local. Okay, so that way it'll turn with the body of the car. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to rotate it five degrees and then back. And all that really does is hold the zero rotation until that frame. So that when I go here to like the height of the turn, let's say right there, and I rotate it, because now it's leaning out, let's say 15 degrees just to exaggerate it, it's going to start that rotation at frame 50, but not before. Now, if you don't put in that little nudge frame, uh, that really doesn't do anything but lock down the previous value, then you're going to get a slow rotation from 0 to 100, and it's not going to look realistic. And then here, it's coming out of the rotation, so what I'll do is just come back to, I did 15 before, so I'll do 15 again. And come straight, and then it's going to go a little bit to the left, so right here I'll probably nudge it. And then in this corner, make it go this way. Okay, so I think that gives you an idea. Let me show you how the wheels work now. Let's turn off Auto Key, because this isn't uh, requiring an animation like you normally need on a wheel. Um, going to this wheel, the way this is done is on the motion panel, under assign controller, under rotation, what you want for the Y rotation, if you make your wheels the way I did in the HTML tutorial, go to Y rotation, click it, and you're going to use a float expression. Okay, so I've already changed it to float expression, but it's easy to change it back and forth. So I can go to flow expression here. And I'll make this a Bezier float and just go back to what it was so you can see this. So I'm going to go to Float Expression. I'm going to do that. And this should show you what it was under Float Expression. Okay, it's using this. 360 times SIN, left parenthesis, S, capital S, times minus 2. And I describe what all those mean in the right parenthesis in the... Uh, HTML tutorial. And that HTML tutorial for your info is right here under on 3dcognition.com under tutorials. And then you scroll down. 
and it's the one Carnimation Tutorial 3DX Max. And just click on that, and that'll launch the tutorial. So this walks you through the other steps. 